Your cringe thing that I don't want you to do. <laughs> But before we get into me getting absolutely annihilated, it's your boy, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has brought a true console level experience to portable gaming. Here you will conquer raids, dungeons, campaign battles and bosses, build up your champions along the way and take part in my personal favourite mode, the PvP Arena. In addition, there are hundreds of artefacts and buffs with over 600 unique champions to choose from so you can fight your battles whatever way you wish. And Raid wanted me to list my top three faction picks and here they are. My number one is the Shadowkin, which has been under the brutal heel of the demon spawn for the past five centuries. Years serving an evil purpose have left a darkness inside them, but their fight to regain their last honour has only just begun. And number two is the Dwarves, masters of hammer and axe. The Dwarves stood firm as their homes were attacked deep beneath the mountains of Teleria. Now, in order to have their revenge, the Dwarves must march to the surface to take back, in blood and gold, what was theirs. And lastly, the Skinwalkers, who once had the power to cast themselves in the form of any man or beast. After centuries of overusing their power, the Shamans found themselves entrapped as something less than human, but more animal. Though wild and dangerous, they can sense evil and may act to prevent it. Also this month, Raid have just released a giant new feature, Awakening, and yet another brutal dungeon for you to beat, the Iron Twins Fortress. If you are good enough to take down the Iron Twins, then it is definitely worth your while. Awakening your champion lets you choose a powerful blessing that can transform how they perform in battle. The blessings both look great and add a massive amount of variety. This whole feature has given the game an entirely new level of depth and strategy. I've had a great time playing around and trying out all the different builds. And Raid has just released a legendary version of everybody's favourite champion, Death Knight. The Raid community has been waiting for this for a very long time and Ultimate Death Knight is everything that everyone hoped for and everyone can get him for free just by logging in and playing Raid for 7 days between now and October the 27th and you'll add Ultimate Death Knight to your collection. So use my link in the description box down below to download Raid for free on your phone or PC and also use the code DCRISES for a bunch of free items to level your strongest champion up to level 50, 5 star ascension. The code is for both new and existing players. So if you want a starting boost in Raid Shadow Legends then hit the link below or scan the QR code on the screen to get unique bonuses worth $30, that's 200,000 silver, an XP booster, an energy refill, an ancient shard and the epic champion Taro, so you can summon a great champion as soon as you get into the game. These rewards are only available to new players and only for the next 30 days and you can find these rewards here in your inbox. Grow back on me, right? So it's, it's 
Some of you have got dressed to get laid, his mama. This is, by the way, welcome. This is Count Dankula's fucking. He's, you've come out, you've shown up for Dankula, you fucking legend. Thank you. 40 pounds, rocking, ripping you all off. I respect that, right? 40 pounds a ticket. At least buy some new clothes, Dankula, man. You fucking like a tramp. You pay a 40 pound a ticket. The fuck is this shit? Also, I just done a podcast with him, yeah? Deodorant isn't that expensive. Just so you know, just so you know. So, right, here's how it's gonna be. Obviously, you're all Dankula fans, right? So it goes without saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a fucking Dankula! Now. <laughs> I'm gonna get the pug out and do the little Nazi salute. With it. <laughs> right. So, thank you, the fans. We all understand this is over 18. Anything fucking goes, right? If you don't and you do need a trigger warning, this is it. Piss off now. We've got your money. We don't care, yeah? We are gonna say some outrageous, some fucking inflammable. Basically, we're gonna do our very best, yeah, to get a second charge against fucking Dankula for hate speech, right? Are you up for a good time tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Are you up for a good time, ladies and gentlemen? Wow, without further ado, let's meet the roasters. So, we've got four amazing comedians, we've got a special guest, and we've got Dankula himself. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Leo Kurz, AKA Mr. Hate Speech, AKA Controlled Opposition. Here he is, here he is, Mr. Leo Kurz. And proving that, proving that just once in a while, Women can be funny. It's Catherine Henson! It's a woman! Here she comes. Absolutely amazing. All the way from New York City. If she was English, she definitely wouldn't be funny, but there you go. Um, welcome, Mr. Nico Di Santo! Nice jogging! Look at this. There he is, he's come. That's my seat, don't even think about sitting there. You sit on that side. Yeah, piss off. Piss off. Piss off. I'm fucking fat, you all! And finally, final roaster, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Dominic Frisbee! Are we going to try and get him to down that pint? Is that what you were doing? Down it! 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 I've now got COVID, thank you very much. <laughs> and finally, very special guest, he is the host of the Lotus Eaters podcast, one of my favorite, most favorite racist podcasts. Please welcome to the stage, <laughs> Mr. Carl Benjamin! <laughs> Here he is. Take a seat. And there's one very, very special seat for a very, very special person. Ladies and gentlemen, put your drinks down, put your drinks down, put your drinks down, put your drinks down, put your drinks down. Anything in your hand, put it down, put it down, put it down. Because we're about to bring on the man of the moment. That's right, drop that bottle. Right there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Count Dankula! Mm. 
Yes, this is, you are, that is a sexy, it's not really, that's an ugly man. Um, and it, listen, it's... It, never, never played Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got you a little present because what's about to transpire against you, you know, you might not like. So this is, this is, this is for you, little, little... From me to you. <laughs> no, he won't die. We, we need him to be alive by the end of the show. We need him. We, we need him not comatose. Okay, right. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna move, we're gonna see forward with the show, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're now gonna cut over to a, a, we're very lucky, we've got a very, very good little video here. So we're gonna pass over to one of the most handsome people I know. So if you will, Darius, take it away. Yeah, Darius, thank you. And here we are, backyard. We're at Count Dankula's house. We're coming to you from parts unknown with no visual clues to ensure that no nerds can locate him and troll him incessantly in real life. This is the house that YouTube built and racism. Let's go. Hi, you must be Sue. That's me. Oh, thank you, thank you. Come on in. Welcome to Dankula's house. Aha! These must be the infamous pugs. Here they are. Whoa. Yeah, that's Buddha and that's Bronson. Buddha and Bronson. And uh, dare I say it, can you, can you bleep this? He knows what's up. Who just accused us? I don't want to say it. Um, Thank you for welcoming us to your house. I'm not going to lie, this is a lot nicer um, than I wanted it to be. Oh, it does. It yeah, it is a bit disappointing. I thought Danku was going to live in a wank dungeon and this is not a wank dungeon. Wow. So this is the kitchen. This is very nice. I can't imagine uh, Dankula has anything to do with do with this. No, the kitchen's very nice. We even designed it and stuff, so we didn't get an option in any of it. I could tell. Uh, Mind if I have a little snoop around? But I don't know. All right, let's have a look. Let's start the first, first, uh, excuse me, first <laughs> cupboard. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, my face is a lot, a lot of tin food, all with their labels facing to the front. He's got like OCD. So yeah, I bet he has. Mm, what's in here? That's going to be fridge, but that's Marcus's fridge. This is Marcus's fridge? Yeah, we have two fridges. I knew it was Marcus's fridge. We have two fridges in here. This is Marcus's, just so we're aware. This is his juice fridge. Come and look. Come and look at what a healthy man drinks on a daily basis. What would happen if you were to stop Pepsi Max in there? Oh, you How raging would you be? Oh, I, I think I'm not safe. It's Hi. furious. And... Uh, Ribena, hello Bronson. <laughs> Ribena, tango, berry, peach. And he's got the good butter as well. He's got the good butter as well. Yeah. Lurpat. Yeah. Always best man. And uh, finally, we have the most infamous uh, dog possibly in Scotland. He's very happy to see us. Um, see the little knob out? Yeah, the lipstick is out. All right, let's go look at the rest. Sure. Come on then. Ooh, a sitting room, I see on my right, and a closed door. I always like to be nosy and see what's through a closed door, so... That's what's... Marcus's office door. Do you want to go in there? This is Marcus's office, so let's, let's check it out. Here you go, let's look at these cool figurines. What was it that first attracted you to? <laughs> it's a dang killer. Um, you, are you into this stuff as no. well? No. No, I'm not. Oh my god. Yeah. This is this is uh, this section is purely for nerds on 4chan and Reddit. Uh, what is this and why is it in? It's Magic the Gathering card. Oh, it's Magic the Gathering card, obviously. There's also I think that's supposed to be fossils, those like random stones, and then like these ones in front of them are like stones that his mum gave him. Like, uh, she's a witch, and I think they're like pyrite or something. I don't know. It's not really very nice to call your mother-in-law a witch, but no, she <laughs> And this is his bookshelf. Yeah, it's got some good books. And there's this 
this huge book which has a special significance. Yeah. So this is so listen, he's a, he's a nerd, right? So go on, what is this? Is Eve online? And yeah. can you tell us about this book? What, so what I is got it? him this for his birthday, yeah. um, and it's like super special and super rare. So it's actually, um, mm, it's a big book. So, um, this is in Iceland, like even like mostly played in Iceland, and it's like, like the main headquarters for Iceland. But they've got their own TV channel for this game and everything, like it's a big deal. So I contacted the TV channel and I told them that Marcus was on the spectrum and that he loved his game and that um, he was just this key innocent man who just really loved the game and if they could give him something special for his birthday. So they so sent he, him he this. is on the spectrum. I think he is, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he is. So they sent him this and it's literally signed by every single person from Eve Online. And, and it says all CCP. So yeah. anything to do with his tattoo? Let's have a look at some of your other books. I can see you've got Game of Thrones, big fan, big fan. Uh, Count Dankula, so much so that it's not even taken out of the, out of the cling film yet. Tatiana McGrath, whoa, great book, I've read that. Ooh, and my Hebrew is a bit bad, but I think uh, this is the Torah. Uh, I think it's been gifted to him by millennial woes. A Magic the Gathering figurine and a Thanos glove. Um, obviously the Thanos glove, Dankula hopes if he clicks his finger, 50% of journalists will disappear. German mason hat. Yeah, it was a Christmas present from my dad because my dad thought it was funny. Is your dad a mason? No, my dad's an asshole. Oh, that's a toilet. That's a toilet? Yeah. Look at that. This, I think, will be the real Dankula because the rest is in your control, but I suspect yeah. you don't go I don't touch that toilet. Yeah, let's have a look. Ooh, that's, actually, it's a lot cleaner. Oh, no, it's not. Ha! <laughs> He's let you down. The toilet's been used. There is skid marks in there. I knew it. What a fucking legend. What else? Shower. Um, wh why not wash yourself with liquid hand wash? That is the way to have silky soft smooth skin. So this, the, to the right is our bedroom. If you want to look in there, I don't know. So this is to the right is their bedroom. Do I want to look in there? Yes, we want to look in your bedroom. Um, and uh, this is where the magic gathering happens. <laughs> yes, I of course. Shag you. Um, now I don't know, have you done this on purpose or is this? No, that's just, it's just good, is, not made it. Okay, no. so this is your side. This is my side. And that's his side. side. Yes. And he woke up after you. Yes. A couple of things, there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. <laughs> so we're just gonna, this is disgusting pants, just there yeah. on the side of the bed. Um, and an empty can of Fanta. Yeah, he takes juice to bed with him every night. That's why he's got his own fridge, because he's like the one fridge for all his juice. Because he doesn't drink water, it's just juice. Look at this. This is what, well, I definitely don't have at my house, but if we do that, what's happening here? Whoa. TV bed. Come up, TV bed, come up. But how cool is that? What else is That's it? That's his teddy bear that's there. So that brown one is Bowser. And yeah. it has Papa gave him that when he was born, so that's like 34 years old. And who's this? And that is a lion that um, is made out of Sadie's first baby grows. Oh. Um, and I, it's for his cotton anniversary. So I got um, it made out of her baby grows. Oh, that's very sweet. Who would have known that a man who drinks Fanta, argues with nerds online, and makes pugs do hit the salutes, still has his childhood bet. Okay, so come out onto the landing, and uh, here to the right, I uh, guess this, this is the bathroom, this it's must be bathroom. your bathroom. Um, I knew it was your bathroom because the toilet is clean uh, and has been flushed. Even the potty is clean. And thanks Sue, thanks for having us so much, it's, it's been absolutely amazing Sue. Get to feel like we know Dankula a little bit better. Um, and by that, I mean I've seen his actual toilet. Listen, <laughs> you've been a wonderful host, brilliant spread. You've even given me one of his drinks from his special fridge. So back to you, Darius. That's right. 
She gave me a can of Coke Zero, and that wasn't all she gave me. Anyway, we're now gonna... <laughs> I mean, she gave me anal. Um... <laughs> No, I gave her anal, so go to room. I did it! All right, we're gonna get our roast, our roast, our roasters on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Hayes Beach, Mr. Leo Kurz! Hello, hello. It's great, it's great to hear Darius admit to being pegged. Oh, fucking... What a treat, amazing. Yeah, it's such a shame ISIS, uh, ISIS refused your application, Darius. But <laughs> in case you're wondering why Darius sounds like that, it's because his dad's Iranian and his mum's Ali G. <laughs> Darius... <laughs> Darius, you look like you're transitioning, but I'm just I'm not I'm just not sure what from and what to. You know? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> actually I met, I met him uh, I met him in Magaluf when he tried to sell me a white plastic rose outside a kebab shop. <laughs> yeah, give, give it up for him. He came all the way from Telford tonight. That's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, no, it's, it's, uh, it's great to have this audience here. You know what I mean? We're definitely doing society a favour by having you all here in this room tonight. We're definitely stopping at least three school shootings. <laughs> <laughs> and one sexual assault <laughs> of a fucking Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's great. Sorry. She doesn't mean that. Um, yeah, no, it's great to see so many of you putting so much work into preserving your virginity. It is admirable. Admirable. Yeah, no, it's great to see other people. Carl, we've got Carl Benjamin from Lotus Eaters over here. Which... Which I do sometimes when they can afford me. It's, um, he calls himself Sargon of Akkad, which is Latin for leader of incels. <laughs> Man, looks like this, this sort of guy who describes himself in his Tinder bio as a CEO because he wore a suit to a Herbalife meeting. <laughs> What about, uh, man, people told me not to do this gig. They're like, oh, these people are, these people are far right. The fucking Nazis, you can't work with them. Man, I, I gotta be honest. If, if they were Nazis, they'd be better organized. <laughs> What's that? Where's your trans girlfriend? Yeah, heckles are supposed to make me look like shit, not like you, not you. <laughs> trans girlfriend who's she's fucking hotter than you. So fucking... <laughs> yeah, and she didn't moan during anal either, so... <laughs> fucking hell. Nah. Jesus. Yeah, now they said, uh, oh, these people are far right, these, these are Nazis, because of course the Nazis started from a comedy roast that got out of hand. <laughs> No, uh, Freddie Quinn and Rob Mulholland cancelled, uh, but Freddie sent me one of his one of his jokes to tell you. Uh, so, because you know, um, Carl got in trouble for saying he wouldn't rape Jess Phillips. Is that right? <laughs> Obviously a lie, but uh, he said <laughs> he said, but look at look at the state of them. The only the only way he's going to rape a Labour politician is if he digs up Joe Cox. <laughs> On Channel 4, by the way. <laughs> I 
And we got... We got uh, Nicholas DeSanto there on the end, looking like a fucking vampire's assistant. Man. <laughs> Man, you look like the product of a frustrated orgasm. Like you're born middle age, you know what I mean? Honestly, Jesus Christ. You look like you work, at, work in a mobile phone shop and, and Carl is the regional manager. That's, man, I will pay for your vasectomy. But, got Catherine Henson here. Catherine says she won't have children. Not, not from her choice, from men's. Honestly, Catherine, you look like you could suck ten dicks blindfolded and still be able to tell which one's your dad's. <laughs> I'm joking, she's never met her dad. <laughs> we got Dominic Frisbee here, who just took three minutes to down a fucking pint. Jesus. <laughs> Got trains to catch, Dominic. Nah, great to see you here, looking like an art teacher who's turned up for a divorce hearing. <laughs> and the main man, Count Dankula. <laughs> Isn't it funny how owners look like their dogs? <laughs> man, we saw we saw the pugs in that video, man. All that inbreeding and breathing problems. And then there's Count Dankula as well. I mean, then there's the pug. I fucked that one up. Fuck it. <laughs> What's that? That's okay, so did your parents. That's okay, so did your parents. At least I can fucking see. No glasses, nothing. You know what I mean? Yes, fucking walking down the street like a normal person. <laughs> In case you don't you don't get it, she's blind. <laughs> Amazing, yeah, no. Count Dankula. Count Dankula sort of looks like uh, what you'd get if you described a paedophile for a seven-year-old and then asked them to draw you what you described. Now, you've, got to, you've got to respect a man who styles himself like a paedophile, but, but clearly doesn't have the actual body strength to hold a child down and fuck it. And you make so much money off your YouTube. Where's it going? Man, those, those trousers cost about five quid. And three quid of that is up your arse crack. Yes. Look like a donkey nobody wants to ride. Look like my sleep paralysis demon. You look like an avant-garde calculator musician. You look like a Channel Islands football coach. Like a, like a farm scandal whistleblower. Like the sort of person who shares missing dog posts from other countries. Like somebody who sees posts saying that you can dry your phone in the microwave and then does it. Man, I bet if I cut you in half, both halves would live. <laughs> he was found guilty of whatever the fuck, some joke about a pug, and uh, he refused to pay the £800 fine. <laughs> oh. No, not out of choice. His job seeker's allowance hadn't come through. <laughs> You look like the sort of person who asked their mates to transfer them 40p. <laughs> I can feel my credit, I can feel my credit course, my credit score dropping just being on the same stage as you. <laughs> Man, 
man. You look like the sort of person who pays to download ringtones. <laughs> your proper age. You look like you're about to go on robot wars with your dad. <laughs> Fucking skid marks in your toilet when you knew... <laughs> you knew it was going to be filmed, man. You're, you're obviously the sort of person who doesn't get out of the bath to take a piss. Or a shit. Man. You, you've got a juice fridge. I would, I would never have guessed, uh, looking at you, that you're the sort of person who likes sugar. You look... <laughs> this is why we've got a heroin problem in Scotland, because people like Count Dankula need to take it just to stave off obesity. <laughs> A crayon, he'd eat it, he'd eat it. That is fucking... Yeah, what the fuck else have I got here? Uh, you look like you join Fathers for Justice, but you can't find a suit big enough. To... No, it's, uh, it's great, you know, it's great that uh, Count Dankula stood up and fought for freedom of speech, and uh, yeah, no, it's fantastic. Preserving all of our freedoms, you know what I mean? Because they're genuinely under attack right now. And, you know, if they'd have shot him down, he wouldn't have been able to, to continue as, you know, an internet shit poster slash mediocre comedian. And, you know, it's important. It's important that he's encouraged in his, in his uh, hobbies. Because look what happened to Hitler when he didn't make it as an artist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen! All right. We've got a very important video. So right now, so guys, would you, these ladies and gentlemen, it's not just Dankula who brings the videos to you. He has a whole fucking team. They're right here. And now we're gonna get to meet them on the screen as soon as, as, soon as it kind of comes into focus. So... Uh, they say behind every great man, we're going to is see a great job at the end of this. Behind Count Dankula is this elite team right here. You're looking at it. Everything you're thinking about then is correct. <laughs> Every single thing. Without further ado, let's meet the A team. You are my friend. My name is Callum and I'm the editor responsible for breaking your earphones every time his intro comes on. <laughs> I'm Jared and I'm Marcus's lead writer. My jokes don't usually get kept, though. My name's Nazi. I'm the resident office bobberer. Don't actually work here. <laughs> I'm Bjorn, also known as Yagru, and I, uh, I'm the I'm the office um, Carl Pilkington <laughs> and writer. <laughs> and I'm Jordan. I'm the newest writer on the team. And so about that. So anyone who doesn't know Count Dankula, how would you guys describe him? Is it, is it true that one of his uh, one of the things he's look he's looking for in new hires is uh, inability to maintain eye contact? Is that? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we do have a few diversity hires within the office in regards to that. Um, mainly, the thing he looks for is a as a trim like a trim waistline, um, you know, nice arse, <laughs> um, and a willingness to sign an NDA almost every weekend. What's it like to work with Dankula? Like, how is he as a boss? Is he good? Does he pay you well? Is he cheap? Is he generous? Is he easy? Like, I came in here, the work you were doing was literally playing the nerdiest PC games I've ever seen. It um, looked quite fun. A day in the life of the staff of Count Dankula uh, is much the same as the last. Uh, we arrive crack of dawn, you know, 6 a.m. We get in, you know, we worked out the comedy mind side of his jokes for him. He's never written a joke in his life, we found him. Uh, he comes in about seven hours later, stinking about his blood and his knuckles. Um, and that's before he hits this. And obviously he's he's a really lovely guy. Like he's not he's he's nothing like what the media's told you. He's he's a genuinely great boss to work with and uh, it's it's one of the best jobs. That's yeah. a lie, it's the best job I've ever had. Yeah, the worst thing he does really is just 
take the pastry off his steak bake and eat that and just leave the actual contents of the pie like a <laughs> fucking animal. Man, they should have tried him for that instead of the pug Nazi joke. That is the most savage shit I've ever heard of. Yeah, it's frankly degenerate. It's like watching a baboon eat a beer. Remember that one was in Glasgow? No, not Glasgow. It's I mean, we saw that baboon eat that beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, Marcus bought a burger. He bought a burger, right? And he took it apart into its component parts, right? In a line. And then it ate each piece. And we just couldn't get a fucking heads around it. Yeah, yeah, his burgers like a Jedi. So, guys, what quirks does Dan Killer have that are kind of unique to him that we, you know, people watching tonight might not know about? You can let us in on it. I mean,. He's a very fussy eater, so whenever he brings something in, like takeaway or whatever, he just takes it apart and eats it like an autist, and it's, it's just weird. Who would you say is the most autistic, including Dankula, in the office, in the autism scale? That would be me. You? You're the most savagely autistic? Yeah, I don't like to point fingers. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of people in this office that are all on the spectrum, and you know, everyone's everyone's got like a wee thing that's wrong with them. But you know, what's a wee thing? A wee thing. It's like a small oh, thing. Oh, a small thing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm savagely autistic you, you as well. You may have taken the throne. Yeah, I. I might. <laughs> what's the biggest secret you could tell us about Marcus? Right. Um, I'm pretty sure on the dis. I was on the Discord, and he just came out and said. Uh, he was into cumflation. Um, I don't know, one of you guys, I'll let you explain what cumflation is. You're the one that started it. You no, 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 I think one of you, I, I don't know. You You've been quiet, Jordan. Right? Do you want to take this one? Cumflation, okay. It's cumflation. Fair. For those that don't know, um, cumflation, <laughs> if you take a balloon, right, to make it safer work, right, rather than filling that balloon with air, imagine filling it with squirty cream. Now, replace a balloon with whatever human or organism-like orifice you want and fill that with cum and that's what Marcus likes is things being expanded with cum like that much where it kind of like the only constraint where it blows up the movie frog like that like that much so imagine that but relaxes to the point where like their stomach is bulging and yeah uh, it's pretty um I only know about this because he's told me the details about it by the way I, I don't know he's told you as well. Yeah, that's how I know in so much detail. He tells everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so he likes porn where women get filled up with cum. Yeah. And the oh. women also usually have cocks. Mm. Well, they're called footers. Footers. It's footers. not really an embarrassing what, secret. Footers are they? What, what, footers are they? Which should be embarrassing. What's a footer? A footer. <sighs> I have to explain all the second right? So a footer, it comes from hentai, right? And this is a total story all over again. Um, it is a woman that has a penis, but not a set of bollocks. That's a common misconception. They don't actually have bollocks, but they still have the vagina. And the, the penis is above the vagina, and that's a futinari. That's, that's all it is, really. Do they exist in real life? <laughs> no, they don't. Maybe in a few years, we'll have good sorceries that have gone on, but no, no, as far as I know. They're like embarrassing secrets, but he really hates sauce. Not as in, you know, like, oh, I don't like sauce on it, as in he just does not like it. It freaks him out. Ketchup like, like it. I've <laughs> never seen a man hate fucking sauce. Yeah, he likes cum inflation. I was just saying that it's really funny, he likes cum inflation, but he doesn't like sauce. <laughs> Okay, guys, and in a segment that we've lovingly stolen from This Is Your Life, final words. Is there anything you would like to say to Marcus, who is watching live and listening now? Have you got anything you'd like to say to him? Probably, I'll go say, like, like you know, Marcus, I absolutely ripped the fucking living piss out of you. But you know, do it from love. And that, uh, you are genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever met. And uh, hopefully, we'll continue being great friends for many years to come. As autistic as he is, and cringy can be, he is actually a really good guy and a uh, very, very influential figure in my life and I appreciate him. I don't really care about the job on that. Cheers, but like... Um, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate more um, your presence. Your presence is quite good. And, uh, very good guy. But you still owe me 20 quid for the milk that I bought for the office, so please mind that. <laughs> yeah, as I was 
finishing uni, I was just in a rough place, didn't know what to do with myself, and then I just fell right into this, so I can't tell you how grateful I am for that, and it's been an honour to know you, so just really glad I could call you a friend, so, you know, thanks for that. Uh, at the end of the day, Marcus, I'm just really glad to have met you, and I'm really glad to have the opportunity to work with you, as well as just be your pal, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of the roast, because I'm sure we're not the worst it's going to get. <laughs> The B team, ladies and gentlemen, and a man wearing an imitation. Before we move on, Darius, I would just like to say, in my defence, <laughs> I am a man of somewhat refined tastes when, when it comes to my particular flavour of hentai. Now, whenever I said, right, conflation, I said I found it funny. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't watch it and wank. Right, I'm just saying. Right. I, I watch I watch porn for the plot. <laughs> it's the B team, ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, B team. All right. We now got our very special guest. He's an actual friend of uh, of Marcus's. He hasn't been paid like those guys. Um, <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Carl Benjamin! I look at the nervousness on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so unlike uh, a lot of people here, I'm, uh, I'm not a comedian, so I'm somewhat of a disadvantage. So I thought I'd just tell you about how I came to be aware of Marcus, just because it's, it's a cherished memory of mine. On the same sex Well, thank you for spoiling my show. Uh, no, no, it was the same hate crime register, actually. Uh, I'd like to respond to Leo and his comments about Jess Phillips, but I'm actually legally obligated not to. Uh, not even joking, I had a visit from the Birmingham PD. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I was uh, a YouTuber of no particular account. Uh, what year was it? Was it? Thanks. 2016? Yeah. And, you know, people were like, oh, you like free speech? There's this free speech case. I'm like, hey, great. What is it? And they sent me this video. And I opened it up, and it's a swamp monster of some kind. And then I realized after he opened his mouth, ah, oh, it's the average Scottish man, right? Okay. So. <laughs> It was a good first step, actually. He was like, look, I'm doing something to piss off my wife. So I was like, right, misogyny, brilliant, I'm in. And, <laughs> and he was like, right, so got this lovely pug. I'm like, yeah, doggos, good, like dogs. I've turned it into a Nazi. I'm like, okay, I like where this is going. This is hilarious, right? <laughs> and <laughs> then we're treated to about three minutes straight of pure hate crime. And I thought, okay, that was hilarious. However, probably illegal. And I love the naivety of it. Right. What, was, what was really got me about it was the sheer innocence of the whole video. Because it was just this unkempt stoner from Scotland who was just like, I can, I can piss off my missus here, this is going to be great. And I'm going to teach the dog to be a Nazi. Okay, brilliant. And then at the end of it, he's like, I'm not really a racist, you know. It's like, oh, oh, oh like they care. <laughs> Three minutes of very naughty words that I'm not going to say. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not a racist. It's like, yeah, that's, that's not going to fly. And then the apology video came, which I thought was adorable, again. No, 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 the apology video, you were on in Iceland or something, was it? You are on holiday in Iceland, and this had gone viral, and you'd become a wanted man internationally by the Scottish <laughs> government. They had, they had found a Jewish person in Scotland, which I didn't realise was possible. And they had actually... And they had actually managed to get you in trouble. And so you put up this thing saying, oh, I'm not a racist, I'm not a Nazi, I'm sorry, like that was going to save you. Again, the, uh, 
the whole thing was just beautiful naivety. Like, think how far back this was now, six years ago now, right? And like, we didn't know things would go the way they were gonna go. And so there's something genuine, I rewatched it before this, just to refresh my memory, and there's something so quaint and innocent about the whole Nazi pug joke, <laughs> believe it or not. It really was, but um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not much of a comedian, so I'm gonna take any, any more of your time. But uh, honestly, mate, I just, I'm impressed at how you've done, how you took it. Because most people don't take it well. Most people just fucking collapse in the first hurdle, especially when the state starts going after them. When they fucking start coming into your bank account against your will. It was a joke. You would think so, but that's no defense, is it? So, good job, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Thanks very much, everyone. Carl Benjamin, ladies and gentlemen. Well, frankly, that was far too nice. Um, so it's time to bring on another comedian to roast Dankula. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Miss Catherine Henson! Hi, hello. I, I am here. Uh, I feel this probably must be pretty exciting for some of you because I can see this is as close as you've ever been to a woman before. <laughs> I can't understand what you're saying. It sounds like you have a cock in your mouth, okay? Uh, I was asked to do this roast at 10.30 p.m. last night because no one else wanted to do it. <laughs> no other woman would do it. I actually replaced another straight white man. He didn't want to do it. <laughs> and I wasn't going to do it, but then I thought to myself, no, I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this roast because I want to buy myself a fucking air fryer. So... <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Speaking of things that should be dipped in a hot vat of oil, uh, when they asked me to do this roast, I was like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> I don't know any of these people. I, I thought it might be because I'm from America, but then I realized it's because no one outside of this room knows who the fuck you are. <laughs> I don't go on 4chan, and I don't have a neck beard, and I don't suck off my dad to pay the Wi-Fi bill. <laughs> so I know I'm not the same as most people in the room. <laughs> but after spending all night Googling you and everyone else here going on the Wikipedias and the YouTube channel, I'm a little concerned that now I might hate the Jews. <laughs> My YouTube algorithm is fucked for life, thank you. So we do have some celebrities here tonight. It's the who's who of incels. Uh, <laughs> I started my research on getting to know everybody who's here tonight by Googling pug dog salutes Hitler. And the first thing that came up was a picture of Carl Benjamin. <laughs> that guy, like, woof, you know? <laughs> Carl is anti-feminist because he is fat and women won't fuck him. <laughs> we have our MC, Darius Davies. He's part Iranian, so he's the diversity section of the show. <laughs> Being half Iranian, he's used to bombing in front of strangers, so. <laughs> Dominic Frisbee's here. Hi, Dominic. Yes, uh, you look like a gay Jordan Peterson. It's hot tonight. Leo Curse's hair blocks are hanging on by a thread. <laughs> and we have the least successful person here today. The one we're here to roast. When I first saw a picture of Count Dankula, I thought this was a charity show for a man recovering from Down syndrome. <laughs> Dankula is a grown man with a nickname. <laughs> Sometimes he's referred to as Dank, 
The definition of dank is an unpleasantly wet and cold space. <laughs> which is how one might describe his wife's pussy when he goes near it. <laughs> you look like the bloated corpse of Mac Miller. <laughs> You, you are so unattractive. When I first saw you, I started to involuntarily transition. <laughs> Count Dankula ran for office and that's clearly the only time he's ever run. <laughs> he was arrested for teaching his wife's dog to salute Hitler. It's like the Pavlov's dog experiment if it was done by Lenny Bruce, except everyone involved is retarded. <laughs> The most surprising thing about Count Dankula's teaching his wife's dog to salute Hitler is that he has a wife. <laughs> As we all know, he was convicted for being grossly offensive and for making an animal commit a heinous act. And by that logic, his mother should have been convicted for being grossly offensive for giving birth to him. Next time you want to get a dog to do something unspeakably disgusting and heinous, teach your wife to suck your dick. People think Count Dankula's biggest accomplishment is brainwashing a dog to salute Hitler, but his greatest accomplishment was actually brainwashing a dog to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people I know are gonna give me shit for doing this gig and say, is it really worth the air fryer? To which I will respond. <laughs> At least there's one less oven on the market for the people of this audience to try to use. Phil Sue's getting some drive-by <laughs> fucking roast. She's nice. Uh, all right, we have uh, we have one last special. We've got some video cameos, uh, and then we're going to take an interval. So, are we going to get these playing? Do, 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 do. This roast is brought to you by. That's right, it's your boy, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. Look, I'm not going to talk about. How you eat your steak well done. Some say even burnt with ketchup. I'm not going to talk about your controversial opinion on traps or just how tiny, or as you might say, wee, your wife is. I'm definitely not going to talk about the biological abominations that you call pets. Neither the f***ing springtime for Hitler. <laughs> I've learned a lot from you over the years, Dank, and most of it I've had to scrub my search history from. But I feel extraordinarily thankful to have met you. You're one of the most loyal, principled humans I've ever met. And I'm really glad to call you my friend. Have a great night. Hello. Who am I and why do I want to roast Count Dankula? Well, we all know Dankula loves a good roast, as well as the other uses of ovens. What is my connection with Dankula? I have played video games with him. My name is Shad and you might be wondering why I'm LARPing as an English nobleman. It's because I fantasize about oppressing Dankula. It's like his own government. It's true, isn't it? I mean, the English have a long tradition of humiliating the Scots, and I assume this is why Sargon asked me to even do this. Yeah, I think we need to give this roast the same treatment as Sargon's political career and cut it short, with no interest in it coming back. Cheers. Hey, Count Dankula. It's your good buddy, Chrissy Mayer. I just want to let you know, you inspire me. Congrats. Uh, I'm so sad I can't be there on this big day. Sit. Hail Hitler. Hail Hitler. Eventually. and you need more work. Thanks, Dink! Thank you.
Greetings from the other side of the pond. Just wanted to wish Count Dankula a very happy roast. He's honestly one of my favorite content creators that I can barely understand. Seriously, that, that Scottish accent is thicker than a failing OnlyFans model. Uh, hi, Wreck-It Ralph here, or uh, Bearing. Um, I've been thinking about this abortion thing today, and I thought, oh my god, they're so immoral. How could you kill a baby like that? And then I thought of Count Dankula. <laughs> All right, Bob Ag. Now, they asked me to come and roast you in person, but tragically, I've got previous commitments. Also, I just didn't want to do it. But hey, it got me thinking that we're not so different to you and I. I mean, yeah, I'm slimmer and better looking, better educated, more articulate and successful. And yeah, my idea of a joke is poking fun at shitty movies, while yours is getting arrested for radicalizing a fucking dog and becoming a national news story. <laughs> But we also both enjoy a good laugh, and so I hope you're able to have a few tonight. Drink one on me, mate. And for everyone else that's lined up to roast him, don't go easy on him. Anyway, that's all I can be arsed saying. Go away now. Supreme Court Justice Dankula. I hope you have farewell in your roast. I gotta, uh, let, me, let me grab a uh, sip of beer here. We're just doing a quick video for Count Dankula. We're just doing a bit of a roast of him. You know Count Dankula, obviously, but... I don't. Oh, really? Never heard of him. No idea who that is. Uh, you obviously know Count Dankula, right? No. Fat guy on the internet? No. What's Count Dankula? I think he got popular. He did, like, the peanut butter trick with his dog or whatever on camera, something like that. Fat. I don't know. Do you know who it is? Count Dankula? Uh, he's, like, putting his... Showing his balls on the internet and stuff oh. like that. Taught his dog to suck him off or something? What? No, 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 no. Have a good day. It's like a Nicki Minaj fan kind of thing. I mean, I know who Nicki Minaj is. Hey, we're just here with a couple uh, dank heads. No. <laughs> it's from one of those places with the dumb accent, so I was kind of trying to get people to roast him, but... I don't know, I feel like it's pretty mean already that we just don't know who he is at all. Like, that's pretty sad, bro. Get people to know more about you. Maybe you'll be liked more. A couple thousand, maybe? You get more followers on Instagram then, and then maybe come back and we'll try this again. I know. And like, tell your mom to stop making fake accounts to follow you on Instagram. All right, well, and also tell them congratulations. Oh, congratulations! Congrats. Wow! Ryan Long, critical drinker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's been the first half. We're going to take an interval, but give up for everyone and everything you've seen in this section. Ten minute break. He's the only person that actually makes me laugh involuntarily. <laughs> well, I'd say that you're one of the better YouTubers. I mean, uh, try not to cry. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please go wild and welcome back the host of the roast, Darius Davis! Dankula is back, baby. Was it a good break, everyone? Yeah. Are we enjoying the show, everyone? Yeah. It's been fucking amazing so far, and we've got, we've got a lot more to get through. So listen, uh, come on, take your seats. Take, it's our fault for starting on time. There you go, take your seats. <laughs> fucking dickhead. Come on now. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are back in black. We are ready for the roast of Count Dankula. We're gonna get this show. There's Leo Curse. You did fantastic. Well done, Leo. You were very, very funny. Leo had a hair transplant in Turkey. Um, <laughs> Leo paid a thousand pounds for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I did try to get a hair transplant. They said your dick's just too big. So what we're gonna do... 
It's gonna keep this show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special guest. We're gonna welcome to the stage. What we're gonna do, we get some energy in the room. Drinks down, 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 drinks down. Drinks down. Okay, we're gonna bring Dominic Frisbee onto the stage. I want lots of love, I want lots of energy, I wanna raise the fucking roof. So after three, we're gonna go mad, we're gonna go crazy, we're gonna bring on Dominic Frisbee. So one, two, three! Welcome Dominic Frisbee! Thanks very much, Darius, and thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. What, a, what an honour it is to be performing at this uh, super spreader event. <laughs> and uh, I read on uh, Twitter, this is the uh, number one event for uh, roasting a weirdo in the whole of Bethnal Green this Wednesday evening. So, what a pleasure. So, yeah, my name's Dominic, Dominic Frisbee. Uh, my pronouns are me, me, me. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, I used to have one of those um, mobile phone holsters, which according to my ex is everything you need to know about me. <laughs> and uh, I didn't actually know what a roast was. Uh, I only uh, Googled it this afternoon, so uh, I'm a bit, bit slow on the uptake, but I've been working very hard uh, on, on insults. And uh, the most damning insult that I've been able to come up with um, is uh, you look like the sort of person that likes Dubai. <laughs> but, but the problem is... <laughs> the, the problem is, I'm not sure he's ever seen sunlight. And so, for sure he hasn't seen Dubai. But anyway... So we're going to do, I'm going to do a couple of songs and um, they start general and then they get specific to the room, if that makes sense. And this first song is a song about how there are two sides to everything. They said he was respectable, reliable and true, the man to lead America and lead the free world too. He'd heal all the division with dignity and charm The solid hand of competence, experienced and calm No more Twitter rants, no more alt-right or orange threat <laughs> Yet, maybe Joe Biden shouldn't be in charge <laughs> Should someone that senile even be at large? Afghanistan is worse than Nam. He's not even vaguely repentant. Just bullies and rants. <laughs> Read the next line. Um, <laughs> can't string together a sentence. Maybe Joe Biden shouldn't be in charge. Another Russian Tsar There's nothing that he will not do He cannot go too far Dissenters jailed or murdered As this tyrant rules by fear This autocratic overlord This despotic racketeer This power-crazy imperialist kleptocrat Well, you could look at it like that <laughs> Maybe Vlad Putin just needs one up the bum. <laughs> we should send Philip Schofield to go and give him one. <laughs> He's gay, I assume. No straight man's that groomed. And what's with the riding bareback? A girlfriend appeared, she's really a beard to wax his back crack and ball sack. <laughs> Maybe Vlad Putin just needs one up the bum. <laughs> they said he was 
was offensive. <laughs> Grossly so, as you can see, <laughs> by the Communications Act of 2003. <laughs> His claim it was a joke for her lacked credibility. <laughs> His girlfriend doesn't subscribe to his channel. <laughs> to the dank peely wally. He's so pasty and pale, it looks like he's got tuberculosis. <laughs> what it comes down to is this. Maybe Count Dankula needs to get some sun. He's paler than the buttock of a nun. <laughs> Got a kid, he claims. He's playing games. We all know he's really a virgin. <laughs> Who's got dank in their wank bank? <laughs> They'd rather shag Nicholas Sturgeon. <laughs> I don't mean to be crude or at all rude and I certainly don't mean to hurt her but go there you'll see his mother's pussy for sale in cash converters general and it gets specific but it's um I feel everything I've ever learned about life um is in this song um it's really a poem um and I'm going to read it to you I I I have a son and I'm very ambitious for my son I want him to be very successful in whatever he chooses to do with his life and in the same way that Rudyard Kipling wrote the poem, If, for his boy, I've written a poem for mine, for the day he comes of age and wonders how to make something of his life. It's called, It Pays to Be a Cunt. <laughs> and I'd like to perform it for you now. Throughout your, throughout your life, you're taught to be nice, to give and not to take. But let's now assess other people's success to understand this big mistake. I'll be straight about this right from the front. You may not like the word, but it pays to be a cunt. Thank you very much, folks. Don't clap, you'll miss the words. And um, they're really good. Right. Um, <laughs> yes, hard work pays and you make your own luck, but the way to get power is to never give a fuck. In order to prove what I have to say, let's look at some cunts in the world today. Eyes down, look in, let's give it some welly. Exhibit A, the cunts on the telly. <laughs> Piers Morgan, Gary Lineker, Alan Sugar, former Prime Minister Tony Blair, Cristiano Ronaldo, Kanye West, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jeremy Clarkson, Russell Brand, Alan Shearer, they're all from Cuntland. <laughs> charming at all times and appear to be nice but disregard this facade without thinking twice jilt your guilt don't wallow in sorrow be a cunt today you'll have success tomorrow <laughs> it's a truth we have to confront show me a leader of his field as i'll now reveal i'll show you a cunt george osborne is first i reckon with harvey weinstein a close second jose Mourinho, emmanuel macron bill cosby one direction <laughs> A 
Williams next to the prick list we add His Excellency President Bashar al-Assad Then we've got that Korean loom supreme leader Kim Jong-un Saddam Hussein, Chairman Mao, Hitler, Stalin, Simon Cowell <laughs> Cunts at the EU. <laughs> both Clintons, both Obamas, everyone involved in BBC drama. I was going to say the Dalai Lama, but I bottled out for fear of the karma. That keeps coming back to play. Jamie Oliver's the cunt that won't go away. He's a cunt on a piece of elastic. You are his subject, he will command you. The royal pedo cunt, HRH Prince Andrew. Benedict Cumberbatch, that's elementary. Sir Jimmy Savile, cunt of the century. Madonna, Madonna, can you do the Fandango? You Charlie Uniform, November Tango. <laughs> he may have resigned as our ruler, but Morris is nothing like the cunt that is Dankula. <laughs> can't even spell count properly. Uh, his dog's got better politics. Now, uh, Webber. Uh, nothing rhymes with Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Apart from cunt. <laughs> Same goes for Dankula. Elton John, he's the queen of cunt. Seth Blatter, he's that dodgy FIFA cunt. Sting, he's a tantric cunt. Lance Armstrong, cheating cyclist cunt. Robin Thicke, plagiarising cunt. Dominic Cummings, manipulative cunt. Ross Ashcroft, a bloke who fucked me over once, cunt. <laughs> Lanky, lippy cunt with a wig. <laughs> Darius Davis, jet black haired mane of a cunt. Um, Carl Benjamin, mythological cunt. <laughs> Catherine Henson, specky cunt. <laughs> Nicholas de Santo, maffanculo pezzo di merda cunt. <laughs> To cunt. Andy, no, it's fucking Ngo cunt, not no. Doesn't have to pronounce his own name, cunt. Right, um, John Burko, not even worth the name of cunt. George Clooney, smug cunt. Posh and Bex, a double cunt. Tom Cruise, Scientologist closet cunt. Osama bin Laden, dead cunt. Jeffrey Epstein, another dead cunt. Joe Biden, senile cunt. Mark Zuckerberg, autistic cunt. Oscar Pistorius, legless cunt. Comedian who just stands there on stage calling people a cunt cunt. Wait, that's me. psychopathic minute with 60 seconds worth of evil done. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a cunt, my son. Thank you very much. Dominic Frisbee, ladies and gentlemen. A man who woke up this morning and thought, I want to dress like Hannibal Lecter <laughs> at the end of Silence of the Lambs. And he achieved it. Good stuff, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, uh, listen, I'm fu listen the, I did the line of Ket in the break and it's kicking in. <laughs> Dominic. Right, we got a very, we got something very special for you right now, thank you. It can't just all be talking about how you are the white EDP 445. We can't just do that the whole... Oh. 
Those who know. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, was just, I was just trying to get a cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> underage pussy okay so we've got a very special very special video for you now so if you will play the video please right right ready right thank god for that Mike. one two three oh listen sorry before we start we've not discussed peace yet i'll oh, shut your ass <laughs> so i'm matt's dad and this is matt's mum we're going to show you some photos today first photo is my beautiful wee boy Getting dead emotional. And the person I'm getting dead emotional. It's just seen him, I know I don't greet, especially him, but I've just seen his wee face now, he's turned out now. But uh, he's gorgeous there. He's be- <laughs> 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 you look how he's a big fat thing, but here that's another story. <laughs> and he would go over here, I think it's his sixth or his seventh birthday, I can't remember. But I think we scared the life out with the clown sitting next to him. And my mum had made dog. The two clown dogs, right? You know, the clown faces, the big cheeks, big, it was all made out of wool, and the wool hair, big red hair, and the red outfit, and the white. I think and it was the about the same time as Chucky came out in the... And the two kids would be petrified going to bed at night with these two clowns staring at them. When they get my clown for his birthday. <laughs> and then I got my clown. He <laughs> <laughs> sees it, enjoying it. And you can see in his face how really petrified he is. He's so traumatised. <laughs> And every morning I'd go in and the two clowns would be, there would be coats flung over the two clowns. <laughs> Three morning, when they would go into the bedroom, and go, did you not like your clowns? And I would make sure that they were sitting up perfectly for them the next night. <laughs> but you can see he's traumatised in there. Can you remember this? Now, Mark, um, when he was at school, we had this dance school, right? You got your dance and at high school, Every year he would come out region because he never got a lumber, he never got a lunch, he never got a kiss. But that life ch- things changed when he did get older because there was times I'm sure the father can tell you the story that he had today, and I've got another story. But it changed when he left school and when he changed himself and he changed his whole appearance, the women were falling at his feet. So you can tell that story. We used to have some issues with Mark coming in late at night and making too much noise and disturbing the whole household. So true to form, he came in one night after the pub, I was clubbing wherever it as he'd been. I confronted him at the top of the stairs over his uh, the noise that he was making and then I noticed at the bottom of the stairs two giggling girls and Mark was absolutely crossed in his hands as if he was playing and he was saying to me, Dad, please, please. Please. So, being the true father, with the standards that I kept, I went back into my room and told him I'd speak to him in the morning and left him his own devices. <laughs> I was we'll say no more about that yeah. one. And I think there was another time as well, I was doing the washing, quite the thing, when I was getting the household to change his bed sheets. And I went up to change his bed sheets and bring in um, all his washing. And when you go in the room, I automatically with the left hand side with his chair as his table, so I could put his clothes all on. And then when I about turned, I looked, and all of a sudden, there was these three women in his bed, and he was all red faced, and these girls were all hee 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 hee, all blushy blushy. And the next one I seen this other wee head coming up from under the covers, and there was a fourth one. He says, right, he's all just waiting there, so I ran down the got my phone, ran back up the stairs, and I took a picture of them all and sent the picture to his dad. Knowing his dad would be wanting to show all the lads at his work how proud he is of his little boy. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make fashion statements, he was also in a band, he was a good singer in a band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I say singer, I use the term. I use the term white. <laughs> We did go and see him at one of his gigs one time. Oh, and he was shy. Uh, he was shy. <laughs> uh, he, came off, he came off after all excited. What do you think, Dad? Shite. <laughs> um, oh, anyway. And he was actually stood outside with him at his um, uncle's salon. And he didn't know it was Mark. And he actually got me and started to go and chase him away. <laughs> and when he realised it was him, he brought him back out and fixed his hair. Tied it up, but there we go. And then this one here is his daddy's oh, favourite. I've got this one, right. Right. Matt, through his life, has been prone to exaggeration. 
And this is the exact, <laughs> it's a perfect example of exaggeration. Matt was about 14 year old on this, this is in Lanzarote. As you can see, quite calm, lovely setting and everything. So Matt's swimming in the water. Next thing he was doing backflips, flipping over, head under the water, came out like a bus mattress out the water, stuttering and spluttering. G -g 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 -g. Couldn't get his breath and everything. says, what happened? He's pointing and pointing, pointing. He's going, fish, 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 what's up? And it's like the old fisherman. It was that size, I get chased by a fish that size. Matt was claiming it was a barracuda. I do the same thing that I've done a dozen times, saying it was a goldfish that chased you and it would bite and argue with me, rather than just ignore me, it still does it. I even get the grandkids to bring it up and say, Uncle Mark tells the story about the goldfish that chased you in Lanzarote and he still gets hot and flustered about it, he actually gets annoyed about it still. It wasn't a goldfish, it was a barracuda. And we used to play tricks on him as well, I used to hide behind his door. I'd hide under his bed, I'd be there for about four hours with Mikel, just waiting on coming in to jump out and give him a fright. <laughs> Quite sad, sick people. But there was one time, he used to do it all the time, he used to punch and he'd like say to me if he actually hit me, but of course like, I'd give him a fright. But there was one time the two of us, he says, right, where's Matt? He's upstairs, he's on his computer as usual. So we went and got his big leather coat. And we put, oh no, and we put the arms in the, the like it, was like big, it was like a big cross type thing on a pole, so we're on the ground floor. We've got this long leather coat with this a scarecrow with a hat. Yeah, brushed through one and a brush had, through the top. Because Matt end. used to be terrified of being around, so we're throwing these stones up at the window. He appears at the window. You've got this stuff black coat winging in the dark. I <laughs> love to traumatise my children. <laughs> She taking things back to Mark. Mark has had a lot of bad press, a lot of bad press, and it doesn't portray Mark for the person he is. There was not one ounce of truth in it, and he has genuinely. You've got, you have got to thank. There's a lot of people out there who have seen through what it is. He is by no means perfect. Nobody is, but for yes. that for that side of it, in regards to the court case, how he was portrayed and everything, it was absolutely disgraceful. It, was it totally it was. destroyed my son for it was it was the reporters and how they portrayed my son. Yeah. They spoke about my son, he was a Nazi this and Nazi that and it was heart wrenching. Reading these things, they absolutely destroyed my son. But I'll tell you one thing, if they ever ever did to cross my son again, I'll put a curse on her soul and I'll throw an itch in her balls free of trap. <laughs>
his wife lives in fear. Uh, a YouTuber with aspirations to look like a 1980 TV dance player. Bullseye! Have we got any more? And finally, obviously, the best roast will, be, <laughs> will just be a large picture of Dank presented without comment. But actually, that's not the best picture of Dank, because that's the best picture of Dank. Hold on a second, though. Why do you like one like a shit Keith Lemon and two? Is that your actual hair? Oh, that, is that a wig? What is that? It's a fucking Photoshop, you retard. <laughs> That's not me. That's not you. Welcome to the internet. Yeah, but your body is that shit. That's why I thought it was you. That's why you do, like, this is a passable impression of what you look like in real life, right? Okay. This isn't like, oh, you photoshopped it. It's like, oh, that's a legit photo. That is dank in a dress. He does look like that. You fucking Keith Lemon wannabe. Anyway. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta keep this show moving. It's not for me. It's not for me to roast you because we've got one more roaster. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your drinks down, put your drinks down, put your drinks down. Here it comes. We're gonna bring on Nicola DeSanto. It's been a good time. Was that really photoshopped? Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, go back, go crazy. Welcome, Nicola DeSanto! Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Give it up for Darius Davis. Uh, just like myself, Darius has some Iranian heritage and he honors his heritage by looking like an Iranian man of the 1970s. <laughs> Have you been to Iran recently, man? They don't look like that anymore. Now, the former Iraqi dictator, Saddam Hussein, uh, used to joke about television in his country. He used to say, Iraqi people turn their televisions off and I'm still on the TV screen. Now, this is true nowadays of Leo and GB News. <laughs> Every freaking showman is like all over the place. Uh, Leo cares. It's like, uh, can they find another guy who doesn't like wind turbines and women's football? <laughs> I mean, I like most of what you say, Leo. I agree with it, but I just want it in a more understandable accent, to be fair. Uh, GB News is like, hey, tonight we ask the question, should the Kingdom of Morocco relinquish its territorial claims to Western Sahara? To talk more about this, here's comedian Leo Kirst. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah, of course, um, Leo uh, self-styles himself, presents himself as a right-wing comic and as a Tory. That's the funniest joke uh, because, and it's not his, it's uh, collective British uh, delusion. British people think that Tories are right-wing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me tell you what right-wing means in the rest of Europe. In the rest of Europe, a party that uh, cuts down police forces is not called right-wing. It's called a, a lot of things, but not right-wing. In the rest of Europe, right-wingers are all about chasing criminals. Uh, in Britain, right-wingers are all about chasing foxes. <laughs> in the rest of Europe, when right-wingers come to the government, the police gets uh, more funding, more cars, better cars, faster police cars. In Britain, the police gets more rainbows on their cars. <laughs> anyway, uh, Leo said he wanted to pay for my vasectomy. It's a bit too late, I already have kids. Uh, the two kids, they look surprisingly cute, Leo. That's what happens when you punch above your weight. <laughs> and in general, uh, kids actually happen when you get a date with a real woman. <laughs> I thought if I'm, if I'm going down for accepting to do this roast, I might as well fall intersectionally. 
Dominic Frisbee is here. Um, big fan, Dominic. Uh, Dominic is a libertarian, so he and his friends. <laughs> Dominic and his friends are trying to help mankind fulfill uh, its potential, reach happiness by founding or finding uh, this magical, mystical place where there is no government. <laughs> That place already exists. It's called Somalia, Dominic. It's not working out, is it? Um, Kath Catherine Henson is here. Uh, Catherine Henson, a female comic with a filthy mouth. Wow, I wish that works out for you. It's basically you and every other female comedian doing that. I was watching Catherine's videos today on YouTube. Uh, she talks about uh, having sex with strangers in pubs to get a free cab ride home and <laughs> managing a sex dungeon where uh, clients used to get pooped on their chest. And it was all so refreshing. I thought for once a female comic is not talking about her menstruation. <laughs> That's a small victory, right? Now, um, I've been told there are some ce uh, celebrities, some VIPs, and I didn't know any of them. The only one I knew was uh, Lawrence Fox. Uh, and I like Lawrence Fox. I mean, why can't I get uh, Nish Kumar or Russell Howard or, or Gary Lineker? Um, I once put a um, election leaflet of Lawrence Fox's reclaim party on the back of my window in North London. And people told me, oh, that's so brave. And I said, no, that's not brave. You know who is brave? Feminists who like Islam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get to the man of the hour, Count Dankula. Uh, you know something has gone terribly wrong with the society when the martyr for freedom is the guy who indoctrinated his dog into Nazism. <laughs> right, so he, he, I think it's fair to say, was or became an involuntary beacon of freedom of speech. A bit like Konstantin Kissin, when he was asked to do no offensive jokes in this comedy gig, and he obliged by doing no offensive jokes in that comedy gig. And then he snitched them to Fox News. A lot of foxes in this routine, I don't know, for some reason. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say that about Konstantin Kissin because people uh, regularly mistake me for Konstantin Kissin. I mean, if you are not Jewish and people think you look Jewish, that's not good, is it? Let's, let's, let's not kid ourselves. But I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here, but seriously, don't you have any more friends? <laughs> You have an army of fans, man. An army of fans. And by army, I mean army in the European sense. A lot of fans, not army in the British sense. Because thank to, thanks to the Tories, now Britain, Britain has the smallest, one of the smallest armies in Western Europe. Right wing party, my ass. Anyway. Okay. So. Of course, we know uh, Count Dankula had a brief um, flirting with party politics when he joined UKIP. But, but that was destined to be short-lived. Let's not kid ourselves. Because by, by joining UKIP, and as you join UKIP, you associated your name to one of the most divisive, hated men in British modern politics, Paul Joseph Watson. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big fan of PJW. He's like a more good looking and angrier version of myself. Uh, but uh, in conclusion, uh, Count Dankula, let's uh, address the elephant in the room. Um, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about Scotland's draconian speech laws or hate speech laws or freedom of speech laws. I think we need to welcome uh, Count Dankula as a political refugee here in England. Um, and when I say that, 
It's not because I like him, which I do, or I agree with what he thinks or what he does. Uh, obviously, I don't want to antagonize your fan base because a few months ago we did a joint uh, stand-up gig together. Turns out we have an overlap in our fan bases. Mine are the ones with fewer tattoos and fewer anime porns. <laughs> My fans are the Nazis who can get girls, basically. Um, but, but the reason I want us to uh, accept and welcome Count Dankula as a political refugee in England is mainly because he's white. <laughs> Have you noticed uh, uh, lefty woke activists recently are quite indignant because they accuse the British public of having welcomed Ukrainian refugees in a better way, in a warmer way, than they did with other refugees. And they say it's disgraceful that just because these Ukrainians are white, the British people identify and empathize more. And these are the same activists who continuously ask for a black James Bond so that black people can identify and empathize more. So now you get it. We have been saying this all, all along. People like to congregate with their own kind, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> so when I say it, it doesn't sound good, does it? But, but when the lefties ask for a black James Bond, it's your theory, own it, okay? Uh, but in conclusion, <laughs> it's been an honor, a privilege, you are an icon, uh, you are a hero. My friends in Italy know you and they're so envious of me doing this tonight. Uh, <laughs> So uh, thank you for having me, and uh, thanks for everything you did, albeit maybe it started involuntarily. Thank you. <laughs> Nicola De Santo, ladies and gentlemen. A foreign man who doesn't know what the word icon means. So. <laughs> We got, listen, we've got, this is another nice vid. People like you, thank you, though, in your life. They like you. Even though everything you stand for, look like, and are, your fucking family loves you. And you know what? You're too attractive for you, wife, likes you a lot. She loves you. And she's sent us this very special message. So this is for you. Thank you for joining me, Sue. Uh, we're going to have a little chat about Marcus, the man behind the count. Smashing. So, to someone who doesn't know Dankula, Marcus, how would you describe him? Um, he's like a cheeky wee boy. <laughs> he just like um, he just does things to annoy people, but like in a dead cheeky way. Like, so remember when you were at school and there'd always be like the wee dick in the class that would just watch high wind teach you up, but wouldn't be like super disruptive or anything. Would just be like kind of cheeky and rude. He's just like that, but we have to. So, how did you meet? How did you two meet? Um, so we were on Tinder, so I matched with him on Tinder and I was like, oh, he's nice. And then uh, I went to work the next day and I was just like walking up, as I used to work in a bank, um, I won't say which one, but I was walking up the kind of hall hallway of the call centre and I just heard this guy say, oh, look, there's one of yours. And I didn't know what was happening, so I turned around and I seen Marcus and then his pal was like, ha ha ha, and I was probably like, pointing at him and laughing, but the Marcus looked up at me and I went, that's that guy for Tinder. And I kind of ran away and then um, he got a fright so he tried to run away but then we ended up meeting in the hallway and it was even worse and then we didn't know what to say so we ran away the other direction and it was awful. But his pal meant there's a mosher. Like, uh, like there's like another mosher person. Wait, wait, wait. So you two are both working in the same place? Same building for like the past year and a half and never, I've never even noticed him. Wow. And then it wasn't until like a match where we went, he's attractive and then just didn't think anything of it because he didn't message me or anything. Went to work and then it was his pal shouting, there's another mosher. And I looked as if what? And then I seen him and I, like, we bathed just like went like tears in the head like, like oh my god now I need to talk to this guy and I, we ran away. And then you spoke on Tinder? And then it took days, and then I was like, hello, question mark, and then uh, eventually they responded to me. I, because like, I, he never spoke to me, but then I thought I'd better say something, because like, I ran it name at work, and now I need to pass him every day at work, which is very strange. So like, what, what kind of traits really sum up Marcus? Like, what is classic Marcus that you'd only know if you know Marcus? Um, living with Marcus is a nightmare sometimes. So he, he does this thing that I've never met anyone else who ever does this but he'll like just 
you'll be chilling in the living room and he'll just like burst through the door, walk up to you, put his foot like on the couch and be like, Bush, and then stares at you, says nothing, and walks away. But it's like a pointy foot, like a ballet leg, so he'll just be like, he'll charge in and go, mm, and then stare at you, and you're like, okay, and then he walks away. And, and when, was, when, when was the first time he did this? And what did you think the very Constant. first time? No, um, but the very first time, the very first time. Can you um, I think, I think it became worse, I think he kind of kept the crazy in for a wee while but like he always makes random noises where he'll just like, he'll walk by and be like scoochie bush or like, he, it's, it's always a bush noise but like, whether it be like, he'll walk up and like stroke your face, he'll come up and go bush and then walk away and you're like, ah, oh, like don't touch me or like, or he, like he, so like when he first done it, it'd be like two weeks into meeting him and he, was, he would like sit and he'd be like bush and he'd poke you or he'd be like squishy bush or he just make, he makes random noises and words or if he hears a word that he likes that'll be the word of the month so for a, I think it was almost nine months of baba ganoush all he said all the time so he'd walk up to you and go baba ganoush and stroke your face and walk away and you're like oh my god what's like an interesting fact about Banker that we might not know and people wouldn't know um, I don't know about interesting, but a random fact about him is the, the wee thing at the back of your mouth, like the wee thing that dangles down for your yeah. throat, um, his is shaped like a ball bag, so it's like he's got a wee set of balls at the back of his throat. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. No. no. So what was your best and worst date? Um, with, with Marcus? The worst one I ever had was, either the, I think it was the second one, and um, we went to McDonald's drive through and just got milkshakes and stuff. And then we went in a, we went to his flat, which is around the corner. And we went in and then he rolled himself a spicy cigarette and then smoked it. And then like didn't talk to me for like a good maybe half hour or whatever. Then I seen him roll another one and then didn't talk to me again for like another 15 minutes or so. And I was like, um, I'm just gonna go. And he turned around to me and he was like, cool. So we went to the door and then he like, put his hands like on the door Mm -hmm. And I was kind of looking at him, so like, if you can imagine the door being there and him looking at me and I'm facing this way with my handle, like a hand on the handle. Yeah. And he's just staring at me. It sounds like, ominous. I, it was awful because he was like, just staring at me, saying nothing. And I was like, I'm going to go. And he was like, hmm. And I didn't say anything. So I like opened the door a wee bit, which made him move his hand. And I just fucking bolted out and I texted him like what the fuck was that all about and he was like I was just super high and he was so high that he couldn't like articulate like sorry I haven't spoke to you are you sure you want to leave would you like a cup of tea he just couldn't he was absolutely nutted so he just stayed absolutely out of his face and then just let me go and I, but I genuinely thought I was going to get sex when I was holded I thought he was going to like because he was holding but the door shut he no, didn't he didn't he's a good no, he's a gentleman he was just he was just quote unquote nutted out Aye. of his mind. So he was just out of his face. It's a, mis it was a misunderstanding. He tells me that he smoked one too fast and then didn't feel the hit, so he smoked another one and then he was at boot again. Yeah, we've all done that. We've all been there. So, uh, but, okay, so just to clarify, not a sexual abuser, no. just a man just who a smoked spicy cigarettes yes. too quickly. And from there, what was your best date? Um, the best date we had. Um, we went to Frankie and Benny's, I think this was our first date. We went to Frankie and Benny's and um, we had a nice meal and stuff and it was lovely. And then um, as we left, he was like, I've got a, pre I've got a present for you. I was like, what is it? And then out of his pocket, he pulled this candle that was like still with wet wax and stuff in it. And he was like, here you go. And I looked at it and I was like, you just steal the candle for the middle of the table? And he was like, yes. Because he's like, his wee innocent face was like, I'm trying to, like, um, what's, what's the word for it? Impress you. I try to impress you. So he stole a candle, and I was like, "Oh, that's lovely." Nothing quite says, "I really like you," than petty crime. Okay. So yeah, and theft, larceny. Yeah. What a lovely date. Yeah, I thought so. And what's the cutest and least cute thing he's ever he ever did? Um. Well, something that I find is really cute is that he. There's this thing when he makes himself a happy plate, and he calls it happy plate, and it's essentially like a wee bowl or like a saucer or something. And he'll take it out in the middle of the night, and he'll go to the fridge, and he'll pick like wee nibbles for himself, so like a wee biscuit, and like maybe a wee bit of brownie, maybe like some peanut m and and stuff, and he makes himself a wee selection, and then toddles off to his office, and he sits with his wee games, and his wee happy plate, and he's, he's all happy, he's, so he feels very content. Or he'll go to his man chair, these blankets and these wee happy plate you know, watching watch movie. So I think I think that's cute. But if you can we don't think it's cute, I think it's cute. And and the least 
cute, eh? Uh, the least cutest thing about him is probably the amount of gas that expels from his body at all times. So one time he met one of my really good friends, Lucy, for the first time, who does our tattoos. So he wanted tattoos and he also wanted to meet our friends. So he was tattooing, she was tattooing him, sorry, and as she's tattooing him, it was sore, but he, he laughed. So when he laughed, he farted, but he was so nervous about the fact that he farted, he kept laughing. And the more he laughed, the more he farted. But he's essentially getting his leg tattooed. He's essentially farting like all over my friend, who's like just met him and is like, "Cool man, this is this is fine." And he's going, "I'm so sorry," but he's just like laughing, farting constantly. So I probably said something he's cute something about him. And is there anything you want to say to Marcus on the night? Bearing in mind he's going to be roasted the whole night. Is there anything you'd like to say to him? Um, yeah, just that, um, Marcus, you are an arsehole. But you're our arsehole, we love you very much. Me and Sadie love you and appreciate you so much. Um, and we can't wait to see you when you come back. Wow. Listen, there's hope for all of you, right? <laughs> he can do it, you can do it, right? A man who's had a lot of happy plates. Listen. Have you enjoyed the show, ladies and gentlemen? Has this been a good show? How have you enjoyed it? Has Dakula been a good sport? You've been a great sport, Dakula. You are genuinely, you're fucking inspirational to everyone in here. You do stand up for three speech. You are, like, I got to know Dakula a little bit over this process. He's a fucking good guy. He's a funny, witty guy in real fucking life. He's ugly as fuck, but other than that, <laughs> He's great, and we've got one last surprise for you, right? Because I reached out to Steve McLean. I did it really, but... <laughs> but we did reach out to someone, because we want this to be special for you. So we got you a very special surprise. Went to a lot of time and effort to get this. So enjoy. Sorry about that, I didn't, I didn't mean for that to happen. Hello, hello Mark Meacham. Nice to meet you at last. Although I haven't, uh, haven't yet worked up the courage to actually come there in, in person. Baby steps, baby steps. Um, Mark, about a year ago, uh, someone who, who presumably is a fan of yours, uh, in the nicest possible way, ambushed me at a uh, women's rights march uh, or event, you know, whatever the fuck it was. Um, and uh, he asked me about whether, he asked me whether I changed my mind at all about what you had uh, been through um, in the famous case of the, of the Nazi pug. Um, and I kind of gave a quasi apology, but I didn't really do a proper one. I, my, my mind was, was uh, was taken up with other things like my own cancellation. Um, so I wanted to say, you know, I wanted to put it on the record here, especially. Um, I apologize unreservedly for my part in what happened to you. Um, I don't really have much of an excuse, except that since I kind of came out of it, I realized that I was in a, uh, as someone else put it recently, a silo um, where I'd work myself into a lather thinking that uh, Nazis were, were, were in, the, um, in the woodwork. Uh, of course, it turns out that the real authoritarians are uh, left-wing uh, misogynistic men. And uh, because I was so taken up in thinking I was defending ourselves from the Nazi menace, I, I didn't sit long enough and think about what was going on what you were going through and what you were experiencing. I was putting a lot of two and twos together and making fives. Uh, I know I, I've said it to you before, I think in much more antagonistic terms, but the photograph with Tommy Robinson threw me and stuff like that. But the thing is, I now know what it's like to be swept up in something that you don't have any control over. And I now know how uh, people can put anything in uh, a context that paints you any way they want. So I no longer trust uh, the people or the news sources that um, helped convince me that you were uh, 
a, you know, a relation to Goebbels. Um, so yeah, I will take this, as I say, quite slowly, a step at a time, but I do hope to meet you someday uh, where I can say this in person. And um, I offer you my hand in friendship. <laughs> I leave you the stage. I'm, I'm definitely going to say that was the last fucking thing I expected, man. It just, he tried to ruin my fucking life. But <laughs> However, I, I completely accept his apology and I'm very happy to talk to uh, Graham Linehan. I too uh, hate women. <laughs> but it was an absolutely fantastic night. Uh, you know, last time I saw a man getting fucked like that, I was watching Pornhub, but it was abso absolutely superb. Uh, like, Darius, you were absolutely fantastic. However, I have to say, you do look like you should be giving birthday messages on Fiverr.com as a Jesus impersonator. Uh, Dominic Frisbee, your songs were very touching. You do, however, look like the geography teacher that molested me. <laughs> He, he, he used to sing to me as well. <laughs> it, it drowned out the screams. Uh, and a lot of people were commenting tonight how, you know, I got fat, but Sargon got skinny. Yeah, well, cocaine does that. <laughs> he was involved in politics for a while. However, uh, thank you very much to everyone that came out tonight and thank you very much for all of the kind words and also all of the insults because Jesus Christ, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> they, were, they were absolutely fantastic and even though I was the target for the entire evening, I have had a fucking excellent time and I hope all of you have as well. Thank you very much and hang around and have some fucking drinks. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a roast of Count Dankula. Have you enjoyed the show? I'm gonna set you free into the night, but before I do, each and every one of you for coming. If you're watching this online, thank you for watching this. And before we let you go, Marcus, you're very important, but someone more important from you said it first, and it was Malcolm X, and he said, be careful when you're reading the fucking newspapers, because they will make you fucking hate the oppressors and love the people who are doing the oppressing. We've seen that with Marcus, when they twisted his fucking words and made him out to be a criminal. He's a good guy, you're a good guy, enjoy!